Hey up and welcome to another bike review from Apple Yard Motorcycles in Keithley. Now sometime a bike comes along which is of such significance and is so widely anticipated that it deserves a second visit and uh, none more so than this year new 2024 Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. So I'm going to take this bike out for a second time and uh, look in a bit more detail at uh, some of the points that have been raised through the comments on the back of the first review. So uh, in the meantime, get yourself up to Apple Yards Motorcycles in Keithley, part of the Moto GB group. Stacks of stock, new and used, and plenty of demonstrators for you to check out as well. Get yourself up to Apple Yards here. Very friendly, knowledgeable and helpful staff. Okay, so for the second time, let's climb aboard this year Royal Enfield Himalayan 450 and see yet again what all that fuss were about. Here we are then, once again, the Royal Enfield Himalayan Himalayan 450 with the new liquid cooled single cylinder engine. Uh, this is the Apple Yards demonstrator in uh, that there sort of creamy sand uh, matte finish. Um, very different profile cut indeed, I would suggest, to the uh, original Himalayan. Bit less boxy, bit more streamline. And, uh, yeah, looking every bit the uh, purposeful adventure bike there. So, a couple of things that have been raised um, in the comments on the back of the first video. Uh, one being it leans, uh, one being rather, that it uh, leans over quite some way on the side stand. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, yes it does. Now, we're on a slope here, which makes it even worse. So, uh, yeah, I might have to put a bit of uh, leg work in to get in that bike level when I climb aboard. So it is quite a far way over on the side stand. I'm sure there'll be a reason for that. I'm not entirely sure what it is. The other one is, um, somebody said... Uh, well, you didn't mention there's loads of vibration through the foot pegs. Um, well, first time I rode this bike, I have to say, I didn't notice any vibrations through the foot pegs. So, uh, I'll keep a particular uh, feel out for that this time around. And uh, let's see how we get on, eh? So, let's climb aboard and haul this bike off its side stand, if I can. Wish me luck. Right, here we go. Oh. oh, not quite as bad as I thought. Right, it's a big old side stand as well. Um, yeah, it's a big old side stand, um, but it uh, it does go over quite a way. I think the old uh, one of the older Africa twins used to do that, didn't it? If memory serves. Anyway, let's get these here mirrors sorted out. Right. And yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. Right, let's fire her up. Let the TFT do its thing. And there we go. I've got neutral. Right, okay then. So, um yeah vibrations through the foot pegs uh, yeah now my mind sort of focused on it yes there is now I can't say whether the extent of those vibrations uh, that I can feel in the foot pegs is uh, any more or less than on the uh, on the original bike um, but it's, my, it's by no means a distraction. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just expect motorcycles to vibrate. That's half the fun. <laughs> that ain't too much information. That's half the fun. And that's why I prefer singles uh, and twins to uh, four-cylinder engines. Because they've got uh, a proper mechanical feel to them. I'm not after refinement in a bike not that kind of refinement 
But I have to say, once the revs are up, it's barely noticeable. So I suppose, yeah, if you're setting off, you know, on your way up to 30 mile an hour in first, second and third, you can feel the vibration of the engines through the uh, foot pegs. Um, not so much through the bars, um, more so through the foot pegs, but do you know, it's absolutely n no reason whatsoever to my mind to be critical of the bike on that basis. That makes no sense at all. It's just, it's there, it's not intrusive. And uh, if I come to a different conclusion at the end of today, I've been ridden this bike for a, for a protracted uh, period, uh, I'll let you know. But even though my attention is sort of focused on the foot pegs now, all I can tell you is, the vibrations there but it's it's of zero significance as far as I'm concerned I don't know why some people seem to have made uh, such an issue of it it is only a handful of people I think the first time I reviewed this bike there were only a couple of comments on the channel uh, and, and, and a good bit a good bit after the video went up to be fair because I think I'm right in saying I was one of the first um, to actually review this bike uh, on, on YouTube, one of the first UK reviews. So it was quite a few days, if not weeks later, that a couple of people sort of popped up and said, uh, you know, you're praising this bike to high heaven, but you don't mention the fact that uh, there's this issue with vibration through the foot pegs. Uh, and the reason I didn't mention it is because I didn't notice it. And the only reason I'm noticing it now is because people have drawn attention to it. And so I'm sort of focused on it. But to put the record straight, if you put your mind to it, you can detect vibrations through the foot pegs. Uh, but it's next to insignificant uh, in terms of uh, detracting from the overall riding experience. And uh, this bike has so much more to offer in terms of uh, what it represents, uh, at what cost, and uh, what it's capable of. And a good bit of girth about this bike at the front as compared with the predecessor, and so I am guessing albeit that it's a fine day today for once that you're going to get a fair bit more weather protection from this bike so we'll see what the fueling's like when we pull away from this junction into traffic and I can flat foot on this bike no problem, I've got a 32 to 33 inch uh, inseam. Hey, hey, 33 in summer, 32 in winter. <laughs> and it's summer, so uh, yeah, flat footed. Really comfortable. Not sure about this little uh, bijou screen here, I think I'd want something more substantial more substantial in terms of its ability to protect you from the elements but also um, perhaps looking less of an afterthought in relation to the rest of the bike it's quite a physically a big chunky bike this and uh, I think uh, it could do with uh, a big chunky screen So urban riding, absolutely fine. So we're 22, 23 mile an hour here, third gear. Smooth as you like. Yeah, it'd be a great urban commuter, no question whatsoever. Now, yeah, I am really, really impressed with the amount of uh, traction uh, and torque with this engine. Uh, I mean, once you get above three and a half thousand RPM, it really flies. 
and uh, just back there was coming up a really really steep hill and uh, I thought oh will the bike go up in third gear and I might have to drop to second because uh, I do on my uh, classic 350 but not a bit of it absolutely flew up there in third gear no issues whatsoever so a very very different creature indeed to the single cylinder engine in the classic 350 of course uh, this engine uh, double the brake horsepower of that bike and uh, uh, of course uh, liquid cooled and by can you tell the difference but uh, this feels uh, I'll be honest with you, it feels a lot more powerful than 40 brake horsepower might lead you to believe. I can see why uh, these are pretty much flying off the shelves. And uh, speaking to Kieran back there, apparently if you want a, a black and gold one, um, or a tubeless one because uh, most of the uh, variants are tubed tubed wheels like this uh, but if you want that black and gold one which is really popular uh, uh, and or the tubeless one you're gonna have to wait while uh, probably around about August so if you have to one get your orders in PDQ and uh, any of the other uh, models in the range two or three week And uh, of course, Apple Yard's a uh, better place than just about anybody else to be able to secure you uh, these bikes because they're part of the big MotoGB franchise. And somewhere in the group, there will almost always be exactly the bike you want. There's nothing this bike won't do, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, <laughs> it's got plenty of power. Um, don't be deceived into thinking that um, a 450cc single cylinder engine isn't going to give you a lot of uh, thrills uh, with the ride, because it absolutely does. I'm winding this back now and I can really feel the uh, urgency in the engine. I always expect fairly tall bikes, uh, adventure bikes particularly, to, uh, you know, not to not be as uh, flickable and uh, manoeuvrable on the bends, but by heck, this one uh, absolutely eats up the bends uh, without a twitch. Yeah, very, very free revving engine. Different kettle of fish altogether to the old bike. I love the old bike. I took the FR Mitch's uh, original Him Himalayan out for uh, for a day. Loved it. But uh, this marks um, a significant step forward in terms of power and handling. Well, of course, there is a very, very loyal following of the uh, original Himalayan, and uh, rightly so. Nothing too fancy on this bike, no quick shifter, uh, no IMU, etc, etc, etc. But what of it? Comfort levels are right up there. Uh, medium sort of uh, firm seat. Yeah, yeah. I think the seats in its uh, 
in its Goldilocks zone, not too hard, not too soft, or likewise at the suspension, and making for a, an all day comfortable ride. But I have to say, the surprising thing about this bike is the uh, punch that it packs. And since I first rode this bike, I think, you know, I was the first to take this bike out from Apple Yard since I had about three miles on it uh, when I took it out. And the engine has uh, loosened up significantly. And uh, I imagine uh, that uh, this engine, once you got it fully running, got some miles under your belt, it'd be absolutely flying. Look at that fifth gear, uphill, pulling like a train. Yeah, it's quite apparent that, um, obviously during the research and development phase at Royal Enfield, they put a lot of thought into this bike. And whether you consider um, the uh, upgrades over and above the original bike to actually be uh, improvements is an entirely subjective matter, of course. But uh, if you uh, love the old Himalayan, but just thought it lacked a slight edge when it comes to power delivery, this bike more than uh, takes you into a different territory altogether. I just love the sound of a single. Yeah, proper bike. Starting to see more and more of these on the road now. And I'm sure these bikes are gonna, in time, prove to be a real marketing success for the Enfield brand and it is rumoured and spy shots have tended to corroborate that um, a sort of scrambler version of this bike will be coming along before too long which is logical given that the old platform also sported scram 411 a bike which I owned for just over a year and very much enjoyed so a scrambler type uh, a version of uh, this bike uh, yeah make a lot of sense there's some suggestion that it might be called the Gorilla I believe Gorilla G-U-E-R I-double-L-A Gorilla um, As in urban resistance fighter. <laughs> hey, not a bad name, is it? Royal Enfield Good Ruler. So maybe that's what that's going to be, uh, rather than something called the Scram 450, for example. But made for these uh, uh, twisty slightly humpty dumpty Yorkshire roads country switchbacks yeah I think even I'd be uh, comfortable off-road on something like this I'm not a lover of off-road over and above a bit of gravel and grass <laughs> and I've been known to get stuck on that before now such are the levels of my incompetence but I think uh, on a bike like this I'd be more than happy. It's uh, not heavy enough to get you into serious trouble. Yeah, the only time, to be honest with you, the only time that you're sort of conscious of the fact that uh, it is only a 450cc single is uh, 
right down uh, in the river range sort of between two and three in a gear that might be just a little bit uh, high for the gradient of the road you can get a sense of it uh, having a bit of a struggle but uh, once you're beyond that 3000 rpm absolutely eats everything up Yeah, if you want an inexpensive, mid-range adventure bike that's inexpensive to buy, inexpensive to run fairly basic in its construction but gives you everything that you need but you still want uh, enough usable power to uh, take your riding experience to the next level this is the bike for you to 50 in a breath steep hill here very steep fourth gear absolutely superb Absolutely effortless. The GoPro won't be doing uh, that hill justice, but it's a steep one. Trust me. Up here on Bailden Moor. And we'll have a spirited overtake. Plenty of power for your overtakes. You're not going to get caught out in 99% uh, of circumstances. Okay then, so let's do a quick walk around, look at the bits and bats and talk some numbers. So then, starting at the front end, we have a 21-inch sport tubed wheel sporting a Seat grip tyre and uh, the uh, brakes that you can see there comprise of a single 320mm disc and a twin pot caliper and uh, the uh, branding is Bybre, which is a subsidiary of Brembo. So yeah, a single 320 millimeter disc with a two pot Bybre caliper and uh, plenty of stopping power on those brakes as required. The suspension up front there is Showa 43 millimeter inverted forks and uh, a marked uh, upgrade in the quality of the front suspension over the previous model there so yeah uh, show a suspension up front uh, non-adjustable i think it's uh, fair to say and uh, as we come round, we see there the uh, upper crash bars giving you uh, some measure of protection at the top end there uh, as an aftermarket accessory you can get some lower engine bars as well to match nice uh, royal enfield branding on that uh, cross member there 
and of course we need to talk about that uh, really impressive power plant there that is a 452 cc single cylinder double overhead cam liquid cooled engine with uh, quite a long stroke uh, compared with uh, a lot of other engines there uh, that's how they've upped the capacity and uh, thankfully all blacked out there so no polishing for you uh, so this unit puts out 40 brake horsepower and 29 foot pound of torque and uh, it's mapped such that uh, it feels that there's a lot more power in the mid-range than would ordinarily be suggested by a figure of 40 brake horsepower and 29 foot pound of torque feels like a lot more go around uh, to the uh, rider foot pegs there nice and substantial rubber inserts that you can take off uh, which would leave you with the uh, toothed uh, metal uh, foot pegs uh, more suited to any off-roading that you might want to do and uh, there we have the ubiquitous uh, euro compliant exhaust uh, double-sided swing arm the uh, travel of the suspension both front and rear is uh, 200 millimetres and that rear suspension unit then again a shower and as you can probably see there adjustable for preload by means of the C-spanner provided under seat. So yeah double sided swing arm and uh, there we have a 270 millimeter single disc with a single pot caliper 17 inch rear wheel spoked tubed and again sporting the seat grip tires which i have to say perform exceptionally well coming round to the back we see we've got led indicators at the rear and uh, always good to see included a uh, rear rack for your luggage uh, chain drive obviously and uh, in terms of the fuel tank that's a 17 litre tank and uh, claim to give a maximum range of 250 mile though I suspect you'd probably be safer with uh, safer with 200 so yeah 17 uh, litre tank overall weight of this bike wet 198 kilograms so only two kilograms less than the uh, previous model albeit that the engines 10 kilograms less but uh, if that speaks to anything it probably speaks to the quality of the fit and finish and the construction parts uh, seat height 825 millimeters we'll have a look at me uh, seated upon the bike shortly Nothing revolutionary up front, the most obvious change is that TFT uh, readout that we went through earlier, uh, otherwise the uh, controls on the left and right bars are fairly standard, uh, what you would expect. Electronics wise what you get is uh, switchable ABS and uh, also fly by wire throttle which uh, gives you two riding modes, two riding modes. And there we have the uh, brake and uh, clutch levers, which uh, are not adjustable for span, but uh, seem to be set uh, at uh, quite a, a usable pitch. And uh, coming round back to the front again, as you can see, uh, straight off the Super Meteor, that uh, Royal Enfield branded LED running light and headlight, and again, LED front indicators. And that there Bijou little screen, which is uh, not adjustable. And I'd want something a little bit bigger, uh, I think, on, uh, on this bike. Yeah, so that's the walk around on the numbers. Okay, so let's have a look at me seated upon this here bike. Okay, so I am six foot one inches tall and uh, 32 to 33 inch inseam, about 85 kilos which interestingly enough is exactly the weight that the suspension is set up on this bike for 
and again quite a haul off that side stand um, it has to be said that the bike goes over a fair way on that side stand and some people might find that a little intimidating I uh, don't know what the reason for that is I'm sure there is one but uh, uh, it's uh, it's a minor point uh, really so yeah uh, as you can see I'm nicely flat-footed the uh, riding position fairly neutral about 90 degrees at the leg and uh, a very shallow angle against the body line for the arms there down the bars typical adventure bike riding position and all in all, I think this bike represents um, a significant move on from the earlier model. Now, I'm absolutely aware of and fully respect the following that the earlier bike has and the reasons why some people have a special place in their hearts uh, for that bike. Um, but uh, this represents something of an order of magnitude further down the line in terms of refinement. The uh, extra sort of um, 26, 25 brake horsepower is very, very noticeable indeed. All the more so because the mapping is absolutely spot on. The, uh, the refinement of the fit and finish, again, is uh, somewhat elevated over the previous model and reflects the evolution of uh, fit and finish and build quality uh, over recent years uh, by the Enfield brand. And in terms of the overall design, I think uh, it's every bit the uh, sort of um, small to middleweight adventure bike. I imagine its competitors will be something like the Kawasaki uh, Versys 300, the KTM 390 Adventure, for example, and maybe the BMW GS310 spring to mind off the top of my head uh, but they'll all be uh, a bit more expensive than this i mean these bikes start at something like 5750 for the uh, basic model and uh, up to 6300 uk price uh, for the uh, tubeless black and gold model uh, you can get hard luggage for these bikes so I'll make an absolutely consummate tourer one up or two up all day comfortable more than enough power keep you on the motorway 70 80 90 miles per hour where it's legal uh, without any issues at all Right, hope that was of some interest to you again, a bike of this stature which has been so eagerly awaited and anticipated, always deserved a second review and uh, during the course of this second review today I've been able to allay any concerns that might have been raised over a couple of minor points in relation to the bike which I've covered earlier, they're of no significance whatsoever as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, the 2024 Royal Enfield 450 Himalayan, uh, absolute cracking bike. Um, second time around, it's, uh, it's still ticks just about every box for me. So, um, hope you uh, enjoyed that. Now, uh, if you haven't already, please, 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 will you consider subscribing to the channel? It makes a massive difference to my efforts and uh, means that I can continue to bring you um, good quality content uh, going forward. 70% of my viewers and returning viewers, for that matter, don't subscribe. I have no idea why. Don't cost you a penny. Not now, not ever. Don't cost you a penny, and it's dead simple. So please subscribe if you haven't already, and please check your subscription from time to time and make sure it's still valid. All right, so um, from me and the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450, until the next time, and in the meantime, ride safe, be kind, and I'll see you.